this is a game I played in a tournament uh, a couple of days ago and um, I haven't played in tournaments for a couple of years so it's kind of interesting to uh, come out and play um, just to see what it feels like so I was playing with the white pieces um, and the game went pretty interestingly um, so we end up in the Schwenningen variation of the Sicilian defense and here um, it's a it's a rapid game half an hour uh, for each player for the whole game and uh, 10 second increments so I'm trying to play fairly quickly on, in the opening and I here made a little bit of an inaccuracy in the opening I played um, a4 um, and the idea is to prevent b5 once and for all but there's actually a slightly more flexible of preventing b5 but indirectly uh, f4 is a bit more accurate move order here because if this is still discouraging b5 quite quite well say um, if black goes b5 now then I can just play e5 takes takes and it's very dangerous for black to accept the sacrifice and the whole position can go pretty bad for black because he's underdeveloped and his king side is still not developed um, so this is just to say that um, I'm not sure if I will have to play a4 like here a4 would be a waste of time but f4 is a more flexible and a more useful move so this was a better um, idea here anyway we transposed into the same position um, but say here again he played b6 and my a4 isn't really all that useful right it's um, f4 would have been more uh, useful because then I could play e5 immediately but I had to play f4 anyway it goes knight d7 so usually knight goes out here but here he puts it to a different square more aggressive because frees up the, uh, the diagonal for the bishop and maybe we'll attack the pawn with knight to c5 but uh, on the other hand it's um, uh, not putting pressure on the knight on d4 so I'm still I still have to prepare e5 um, here it's a bit too early to play e5 so I first move the king away and here my opponent should have played bishop to e7 but um, had he realized that I'm really trying to play e5 he wouldn't have played his next move uh, but here he just thought I don't have any particular plans I guess and he can just develop as he wishes so he played g6 this has two downsides. Well, first, it doesn't develop a piece immediately. Um, well, three downsides, actually. Uh, secondly, uh, it weakens that knight on f6. And we'll see that this is very important in some lines. And thirdly, if the bishop ever ends up going to this diagonal, then this pawn would be weak. So he doesn't even want to put the bishop on g7 at all. So just uh, mixing plans here in the opening, uh, and I got really cheerful. So I played e5, um, maybe too cheerful. Um, and the idea is very simple: that after black takes, um, say, well, this knight will be hanging on f6, so it's bad for him to say take here with the knight this is just a blunder because here I simply win the, this piece so had the pawn been back on g7 it would actually be a better square for the pawn so g6 is a completely harmful move so because of this he can't really take me on e5 he can't take with the queen either because well then I just take the bishop and and if he and if he takes here again there's a big problem because well this whole file is just falling apart and I'm also attacking the rook here so so he had to play knight to g8 uh, but that really hinders his development even further and I thought I can do anything here I, I thought I can sacrifice and keep the king in the center and I just wanted to play a few interesting moves so I just wanted to complicate a, the game as much as possible so I went bishop uh, to g4 I, I, I could have played just something simple just defend the pawn and I have a great position because all his pieces are still completely undeveloped the F file is weakened by g6 would have been a good position for me I went bishop g4 
the idea was to um, sacrifice on e6 and uh, and I got a bit too carried away with this idea here my opponent played a move which I thought was also helping me out he played knight to h6 um, and here I missed a really good idea I, I missed the idea that I should have seen um, I got too carried away with my idea the best move was bishop takes unexpectedly and when he takes I played knight this knight to b5 and uh, this is winning because say when he takes I'm gonna put the knight to d6 with a check um, and I'm gonna come into here and here and the rook will be taking on f7 and this is just completely devastating for example queen takes well then I simply win this piece and this piece is still hanging I'm up a piece um, and black's king is completely devastated so this idea is something to remember takes takes and knight d to f5 uh, to b5 one of the typical ideas in Sicilian um, is to sacrifice this knight on b5 I got carried away with a different idea so I sacked here and what I really got attracted to is to play sort of for the beautiful ideas I got really carried away with this idea that I have two knights that are both hanging but he can't take either one of them because say if he takes if he takes this guy this check wins the queen and the same way if he takes the other guy I still win the queen so he, he had to play rook to c8 covering c7 and here I'm a little bit stuck I, I wasn't really sure what to do um, I thought some lines, in, initially I thought lines of taking on a f8 and then taking here would be good for me but it turned out that they wouldn't be so great so I had to go back um, and here he had the guts to take on e5 and I'm just down a piece for only a pawn and the position is completely wild to rook e1 he has time to defend on e5 um, I played bishop e3 with only 5 minutes left on the clock and as we'll see time played a really important role in this game here he lashed out with g5 maybe a little bit um, this is probably a mistake um, so I played knight to h5 and again this knight is just hanging up there um, not really defended enough times but he can take it because now if he takes well then this knight comes from here so this story of the hanging knight is pretty funny in this game so he had to cover up f6 um, I defended the knight and here he blundered again um, and we're really down to like four or five minutes on the clock with very small increment um, so he could have just consolidated with queen to g6 instead he played um, knight here I could have taken on g5 which was winning with the bishop instead I went bishop to d4 which is still pretty good he had to move the king away because otherwise I was just coming and checkmating him and here I played for complications again because we're both very low on time and I played knight to f6 it, it's funny how that knight made a, such a long trip all the way to f6 he defended with um, rook e8 um, and uh, I went bishop to c3 bishop b6 was winning instead um, and here I, I lost track of the recording I think he played some move like b5 and I could have just uh, with my beautiful knights even though I'm down at peace this position is very good for white um, I could have probably just um, won like this and I saw this move and I saw that his only reply is uh, queen to d6 after which I'm simply winning a rook or a piece completely winning position for white um, he doesn't have threat of mate on, the, on g2 anymore and I would be winning here but in this position, or in a very similar position, I simply f froze up, and with my opponent having only one second on the clock, I lost on time myself, <laughs> completely forgetting about my clock. So a very useful experience for me, to, a reminder what it's like to play in tournaments, and that sometimes you can play for beautiful ideas, but it just doesn't always, you know, like your ideas don't always come to the, um, to what you had imagined, and you just gotta watch the clock, be practical, and um, y you can play for fun, but also keep track of, uh, of the result of the game.